There's another chapter of women's pro basketball here which cannot be forgotten. In fact, it's the first chapter. Every day was like a surprise. <laughs> At a senior living facility in Houston, we found two angels. Just very thankful. One visiting the other. Our players said. Reminiscing about old times. Going up and down. Their stories and stuff. This is our warm up. Proof they definitely earned their wings. <laughs> this video from 1979 and the KHO U11 archives features a team called the Houston Angels, which later won the first championship in the history of women's professional basketball. The secret to the team's success? We'll get to that. Back then, head coach Don Nodal, initially, didn't know what to think. I've never coached women before. When he received a call from a man claiming he'd bought a team in a new league. I was looking for a coach and I was told you would be a good one to have. And I thought, wow, well, you know, I'm stunned. Don found an assistant coach, and the two set out to build a squad from scratch through an open tryout. So my mother and I hopped in the car. She made a shirt with my name on the back of it. So there, they discovered Karen Allenbacher, who ended up wearing number 11, a star at Baylor. She was then coaching seventh graders. Travis Jr. High brought this Houston Chronicle article and said, Coach, you need to do this. What followed was a whirlwind inaugural season for the Women's Professional Basketball League and the Angels, who played in front of sparse crowds. I don't know how many we had. We might have had a... At Astro Arena. Thousand people, how they got there, I don't know. Nodal had to get creative to keep the financially strapped team afloat, at times scraping together just enough players to make road trips. How did you and, overcome uh, all that? I don't know. A bogus investor even offered to buy the franchise for a million dollars. It was a sham. You can kind of see the energy of the 70s in the WBL, where it's, it's sort of shotgun in a lot of ways. They're Kate Fagan is a former pro player and the author of the book Hoop Muses, an insider guide to pop culture and the women's game. The stories that come out of the WBL are fascinating as well as just a, a, a short glimpse into the financial picture of so many of these women's leagues like there's just this idea like let's do this thing and let's get just enough money to start it and not the long-term vision of what's truly needed the losses needed to sustain a league salaries ranged from only thirty six hundred dollars to fifteen thousand for star players we had food stamps and houston's coaches karen points out ended up getting nothing not one penny were these men paid luckily they had their day jobs to their opponents the angels style of play was more hell than heaven their physical defense earning the team the nickname Houston Muggers. That first season, they won 26 of their 34 games. And in the postseason, later beat a team from Iowa in the league championship series. What's the reaction? Is there a parade? Do you get championship rings? We got rings. Oh, you got rings. The final game in Houston was played in front of nearly 6,000 people the largest crowd to watch either team all season. We've got four players that are starting that uh, we got in our tryout camp. And, and the secret to the Houston Angels' success? <laughs> Nodal had no blueprint. So Don, now 93, quickly relied on his previous experience as Rice University's men's coach. The solution was simple. I think we've got it figured out. We need to... Quit coaching them as women. We're going to start coaching them as basketball players. And from that day on, they got better, got better, got better. You know, and many of us weren't, weren't coached really hard in college. You know, it was, you know, it was in the 70s, right? We, we adjusted. And that's what people do, right? Coach, Coach, you do bed check on the road trips? <laughs> Just on my assistant. <laughs> <laughs> these two remain in touch all these decades later. Thrilled to watch the game video we brought along. God, I didn't realize I had so much hair. And eager to share their stories. My team is the star. That hadn't changed. 
After all, the good deeds of these angels shouldn't fade into oblivion. This gave many girls the opportunity to fulfill a dream. They would have played for nothing. They were so eager to win and to be a professional. It just, it was w one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life. In two of the league's three seasons before folding, we caught up with Don and Karen about a month ago, and since then, Karen continuing her successful career as a coach, this time at a small school in Huntsville.